All right, this is the October 29th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen that will start here in the town office and continue as the all committee meeting at 7 o'clock in the town hall. We're being taped tonight by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public later on. First item of business is the minutes for our tax classification hearing on October the 12th and the minutes for our select board meeting on October 15th. Has everybody reviewed those minutes? Yes. Any changes or additions? No. Hearing none, I will make a motion that we approve both of those sets of minutes. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. So I need to abstain because I wasn't here. So just okay. the one of this one. Of the tax classification yeah. hearing. Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay. So you can abstain from that. Um, and that's, I'll, I'll, I'll make it a, uh, a separate vote, Phil, uh, for the October 12th tax classification hearing yes. all right we have a second all in favor aye. yes okay and on the 15th when bob was here mm. um if i have I'll a second, second on that. that yeah okay all right yes aye everybody in favor okay yeah. that's good all right. uh, if anybody does have any changes to the minutes um you know i, I uh send them out uh, the week before, if you can let us, mm -hmm. if you can just let us know, mm. um, we'll make those changes and approve them as, as presented amendment. at the Monday meeting, um, so we can have that be a smooth process. Sure. Okay. Next, uh, next item on the agenda is our warrants. We have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for sixty-three thousand ninety-four dollars, a payroll warrant for one hundred nine thousand. $781 and a payroll deduction warrant of $27,147. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, next item. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil, do you have any since last week? No, I've been okay. busy. Sorry. I couldn't go okay. to breakfast on Friday. I okay. thought I was going to at the last minute. I couldn't. So. Yeah. So I had a few that I don't know. It's always hard for me to know some of these meetings, whether they're official town meetings. But we were all invited to an event up in Shelburne Falls last week where Shelburne was celebrating getting a national award. Uh, they were awarded being one of the top, I think, 12 destinations in the country. So top 12 destinations in the, in the country, country for people in Conway in the whole country the US really yeah top 12 yeah so it was a American planning association okay uh, award yeah. okay and, and they had somebody there from the organization who listed lots of reasons of what they liked about Shelburne Falls okay. uh, and in their mind Shelburne Falls has done an excellent job of of creating an atmosphere in town that makes it a great place for tourists to go. Oh, and it has to do with the, the speed limit on the roads and the kind of signage they have, the little banners they have, um, you know, a lot of town planning things. Yeah, Shelburne Falls has always done a great job at, yeah. at, at attracting, attracting visitors. Do, yeah. do they realize it's not a town? Uh, we didn't talk about that, but anyway, but it was, but it was, it was you know, I mean, it's great it's that they're getting quality. recognized. Good. Good. Um, and uh, we had a FERCOG meeting here dealing with drugs. But I, I did, you know, you were here, right? Yeah. So, so that's why I was there. So you were there. Yes. Yeah. And and that I mean, and that was a good presentation. Yes. And uh, we had an MCAP meeting last that was, week. That was at our last select board meeting. No. Yes, it was a it was a select board meeting. The last select board meeting. It, it was a, it was a mid mid term. Uh, it was select a, board meeting. Off week, yeah. Okay, uh, it was an off week meeting, specific right? Specific to yes. that, right? Right. More or less, right. also signed the election warrant. But it was a, a very good presentation. It was excellent information. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're still having uh, the. Uh, I'm the rep to the uh, committee that we call MCAP, the Municipal Coalition Against Pipelines, and we get together about every two or three months and okay. talk about is there anything going on and things like that. So we had another meeting. It was. Is there anything going on? 
Uh, no. 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 I mean, yeah. There's always things going on. But How about the but, front page thing no, about the pipeline from Springfield up into Northampton. But but nothing going on in Conway. Oh, we don't care about them. Well, we do. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and last week we had a we had an MMA breakfast where the MMA came and they gave a really good um, review of the legislative session. Mm -hmm. And then really took a lot of questions of suggestions people had for what legislation we might want to see mm -hmm. next year. And, and the best thing about that was all of the new reps were all there getting introduced and right. asked questions. Right. Great. Okay. All right. Um, I really wanted to make that breakfast last, the re legislative breakfast last Friday, but um, I had to be in Gloucester early. So I missed it, unfortunately. It, I, those, those breakfasts are extremely good for, They're very good for getting information and uh, and this one was in Sunderland so it was right it, it convenient. convenient yes yeah yeah how many how many selectmen showed up you from Conway well from no from the, <laughs> from the community in general I, I really don't know you know there might have been 50 people there mm -hmm. 40 people there. sure it was, it was good about, and it was about half select well there were you were there, Tom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say there it was uh, a third selectman, a third town administrators, and a third other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I didn't make any meetings, but I was on the um, Department of Energy Resources call, and that is on the agenda, so I will wait to talk about that as an agenda item. Great. Okay. Next item, public comments. I don't see any members of the public, so we don't have any public comments. And we don't have any old business on the agenda. New business on the agenda, appointments. Tom Pleasant to the Highway Facility Committee uh, to June 30th, 2019. Now, I, I had a, uh, an email into him, and he seemed a, a, a little bit on the fence about that. And the last I heard... Ken was going to talk to him. Do we want it? Do we want to table this? We need this? to table that. Yeah, I, right. I think so for for now right. because but I haven't heard a final word back. Okay. Yeah. Then, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll. I can see the logic behind it, though. I mean, I'll definitely encourage him to. I don't. If I knew him, I would encourage him to. But he's your next door neighbor. You can walk over, buy a cup of sugar, and encourage him to do it. Um, Tom has been on a number of committees and. Um, yeah, he'd, he'd be he'd be very good on that committee. So if we get a you know, final property affirmation from him, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll, of course we'd appoint him. Um, we have a um, an appointment. We have to appoint Jason Hunter as the basketball director for the 2018 to 2019 season. I never knew we had such a position. Uh, it's well, not paid, um, well, yeah, but what it does is, is it, it, rather than having the, um, the Parks and Rec people do it all internally, um, they would rather have it come to the select board. There are actually a couple different ways we can do this. It's still being, it's still being formed from getting Conway Youth Sports into the town system. So I actually uh, want to uh, discuss that within the personnel committee. Too. Okay. So this is youth okay. basketball. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah, it's not not adult, not adult basketball. Yeah, he should. It should. He should have to come out and play with the adults too, though. <laughs> yeah. We're short people, and we we need need a couple. So now, now who is handling this before Jason? Do we know? It sounds if new. Any, if anyone. Jason did it last year. Oh, Jason did it last oh. year too. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Then he's just continuing in the same in the same spot. Okay, I'll make a motion that we appoint Jason Hunter. Um, to serve as the youth sports basketball director for the 2018-2019 season. Do I have a second? Sure, a second. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Right. Okay. Okay, our next item is the electricity aggregation discussion. Do you want to lead off on that? Background. Talk a little bit, bit about our background. Well, I can talk about the background. The background okay. is that uh, 
a, a group of us energy folks went around and spoke with a lot of the select boards and energy committees in Franklin County towns and um, who many of them had sort of expressed a general interest in energy committee meetings like the one that Bob Dean runs at FERCOG had expressed an interest in in aggregating our electricity um, each of the towns individually but doing it together so when we all went out to bid for electricity we could combine our electricity needs and and um, buy it all buy it all together because then we would be buying enough electricity to get um, uh, to get everybody to get to get the people to bid who will only bid on very large orders mm -hmm. um, as opposed to a town like Leverett that went out by themselves and they're struggling to to get a bid that's lower than the Eversource price. Yeah. Um, so so um, that's been in the motion, and we have talked about it a couple times here in select board meetings. Um, there are now 13 towns that have all that are all in process. There's a couple towns that are um, are a little slow to join Waitley and uh, and Sunderland, and they they may be done now. I, I don't know mm -hmm. the, the latest status, but um, and then there's one more town, Shootsbury, that just appears to not be too interested but mm -hmm. so so those are the towns that all started in this process there's 13 of them now that are all done and we voted a while ago we posted the our plan and and uh, that's now been sent to the DPU mm -hmm. um, okay our um, I was on as, as part of this whole process um, colonial power was in what about six weeks ago now and, and we basically approved the plan for them to submit the plan to the Department of Energy Resources. Uh, last Tuesday, um, the department held what they call a con consultation conference call. Um, there so was were, that with all the towns? All the towns were on the call except yeah. one, and I forget which one that was, but the other 12 were on the call. Yeah. And um, it may have been Warwick that wasn't on the call, but anyway. Um, and, and Dan Burstein, who's legal counsel for the Department of Energy Resources, uh, explained what the call was for and that um, he had gone over the plans. He had a couple of um, suggestions for minor changes and clarifications. Um, and uh, of course, uh, Mark Capadonna and Denise Allard, Allard from uh, Colonial Power on the call, and they're going to make those those slight changes to the plans. We should receive a consultation letter from DOER, and uh, Dan said by this the end of this week. Once we receive that letter, and it will come into to Tom. Once we receive that letter. That gives us permission to submit the plan to the Department of Energy Resources. Uh, I'm sorry, the Department of Public Utilities. Um, so we do that ourselves. We, Mark doesn't do that. Colonial doesn't do that. No, Mark. No, no. They they do everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. We get we get the letter. They get a copy of the letter. That becomes part of the plan. Yeah. Okay. And once once that comes in, then what we we do while they're uh, submitting the plan to DOER is that uh, we should be doing a public review process, okay, for the residents of Conway. Uh, Tom, did they give us any any plans? Not yet. They didn't, okay. Um, we could, we could, we have, we must have electronic, an electronic copy of the plan. That's yes. on the website? Yes, okay. it was posted, All yeah. Right. It's been posted, all right. Although you're saying there's going to, it's going to get changed. We can. Well, it, they're they're not they're not significant changes. Uh -huh. and what uh, website is it on? The what? What website? It's on the town, 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 town website. It, 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 it may it may have dropped down. It may be something you'd have to scroll down in the news, yeah. older news. Uh, Lisa, could you bring that back up under uh, important notices? We could we could do three copies of the the plan. One to stay here, one to be in the clerk's office, and one in the library. And um, maybe at our next meeting, we'll make an announcement, an official announcement, that we'll start the public review process for our residents. Um, 
and, and that way they will have a chance to comment on the plan. Those comments will be included uh, in the plan, in the final plan that goes to the Department of Public Utilities. Um, I know, I don't know how uh, Colonial handles that. I, I know how we handle that, and it's, it's an important part of the process. I'll make um, sure the Energy Committee knows about that. Okay, all right. So do we um, need to have a public meeting? I hope or, so. Or it, it, it ends, so I, it I ends we should. Yeah. Multiple it, ones. It ends, the public review process ends with a public hearing. Okay. Normally at a select board meeting, or the Energy Committee could do it, depending upon, you know, how they want to get involved. Okay. Um, and essentially that's an important part of the overall process. And... How many of those does Mark conduct? Did, didn't he say that he was going to, that, the, that they do a public info at the beginning of the thing, like the, a presentation of whatever. Didn't. They can, they can do. They'll do at least one if we want them to. Yeah. Okay. All right. the, the important one that they usually do is to get it through the a warrant article, but we didn't have to do that because we had we already had we, it. We, we had already passed that, so we didn't have to have that public information meeting. But, uh, but I think a public information meeting would be great. During the review uh, process, there should be a, at least one. Because the only argument against this is the same argument against Obamacare, that you know, you're know making choices for you, you're depriving people of their own choice, and blah, 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 blah. And the more hearings, the more everything else, the better off yeah. you are in it, terms of uh, we're not getting, getting people to focus on the issues and the mathematics involved. You're, you're, you're basically just giving a people another choice, and you're doing... You're doing some bulk buying, and they can be involved in it or not be involved in it. It's yeah, you know, it's not depriving of anyone of choice, and the, and but the, but well, it is because they'll it, get a postcard. Well, they do have to opt out. It is yeah, an exactly. opt out program. That's so, a choice. So, well, according to the it, law, it's an opt out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know that's the, unfortunately that is a question that comes up all the time. Uh, that's the way the law is written, and the the logic for that is that with an opt out program, you will get the largest buying group. With the largest buying group, you have a better chance of getting a lower price, and that's the, the whole reason for it. It's just like belonging to BJ's or, or Costco. Yeah, or, the, the, the math know. makes sense. I, I, I agree with that. The, I, I think, however, there's a, usually a price to be paid anytime you try to shortcut the consent. You know, just people coming, like agreeing to do this on their own, ahead of. A and, board. and there will be some people who haven't heard about it and who. We hear from no, no matter no matter how much information you put out there, no matter how many public sessions you have, you will always have people that didn't hear about it. Yep, it's just it's fact of life. You know, it's fact of life. I'll, I'll but, be taking those calls. But one of the reasons we yeah, <laughs> but one of the reasons we have hearing is so that afterwards we can say we had the hearing. Right, right, right. Oh, oh, we we have to have we have to have the hearing. We have to have the hearing. Yeah, yep. Um. Okay. Any any other information? So I, wanna, I, the only on. question I had about that was that in the notice of what the conference was going to be about, one of the things was um, acknowledging that after the first six months, there's no guarantee of lower prices. Because uh, Eversource rates change every six months. Our but, prices wouldn't change. But the Eversource, it's possible Eversource could suddenly dramatically lower their, their rate. It's not that the, the the price we pay would change. I gotcha. So, um, so would, would, do, do people have a once and done opt out thing, or is it a continued any time notice? daily? You can uh, opt out. opt out any time without penalty or, yeah. or 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 termination fee. But then it's up to them to compare rates from their previous provider. Uh, well, they would know what the rate is that they're paying, and and every six months, Eversource is required to to set their rate, which can go up and down. So would they be supplied with the information by Eversource, what, the, what Eversource it'll, now it'll, is it'll versus be, what they are? It'll be on our website, yes. Yeah. yeah. And has that ever, in your experience, has that ever happened where Eversource lowers the prices beyond what the contractor oh, does? It, it, uh, yes, that can happen. Has that it happened happen. with you? Um, it has not happened with us. Okay, because we're dealing with with large, large municipalities that can get 
get good rates. So do, that's why there are thirteen involved in this. So does this, does this like if if the select board becomes aware that it is now less expensive with Eversource than it is with the with the select board, then have a duty to notify all the people in the town that this is then it'll it'll be on our website, and we we can certainly announce that at at a meeting. Sure, yeah, and then people have a choice: they either stay with the program or, or they get out. You know, we don't have a duty, though. I mean, it, it, but but do, you know, I, I would say we do. I would say we do. But in a in a in the sense of public in, interest, and maybe. since we're sitting here as parents, patriotic, you know, in, in the role of a father, like determining what's better for everybody to begin with, then we should continue in that we're, role. I don't um, think we're sitting here. Well, continuing as as. Making decisions for people. We well, we are attempting to lower the price of electricity. We are for everyone in Conway. It's a good it's a good and idea. They can, and they can choose to take advantage of that or not. Right. Uh, it's not that we're forcing anyone to do anything. Right. Uh, I, I I agree. But if we find out later on that it's no longer good for people to keep doing this, I think we should ha we should notify the town. Oh, that that's uh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we could. Yeah. Okay, that was all. We could do that. Yeah. Any other any other comments on, on the aggregation process? And, and once it goes to um, the Department of Public Utilities, it's going to take it's going to take nine months to get approved. Yeah. So you know we're not talking about implementing this program until next fall. So, you know, there'll be plenty of time for. Um, you know, public review processes and, and things like that. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda, Citizens Academy. Tom, do you have some information on that? Yeah. Um, I've uh, I sent around an, an email and mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of examples. These are from the MMA conference last year. There was a, there was a workshop and uh, it's a way to introduce the functions of the town to people in the town um, in a kind of a structured way. The idea is to set up meetings with all the department heads, uh, one meeting a week, and have people uh, be able to attend those and where the department heads would talk about their department. And One meeting a week to do this? Yeah, so it takes eight to ten weeks. I mean, it's an eight to ten week process. My, but you are a glutton for punishment. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, can be, it can be structured in a variety of ways. Uh, typically, the larger towns, um, you know, give, give certificates of participation to people who, who uh, went to went to the meetings and, you know, there might be, um, you know, some who go to all of the meetings and some who can't make some of the meetings. Uh, but it's, it's a great way to have a, a place that's specified where people can go to learn about a particular department. Or we could do some combinations of departments, depending on, uh, um, we would have some uh, sign-up you know, send something out, we're going to be doing this, a lot of notice, try to get people to register for it. Mm -hmm. So we have some kind of idea, you know, how many people sure. uh, yeah. might be attending these things. Um, Why do people have to commit to eight to ten weeks? So they get um, a certificate at the end? Well, and pe people don't have to do anything. Right. If they're interested, they can show up. <laughs> so um, we'd, we'd like to know, you know, you know so there'll be a registration process, uh, so, th and that'll help determine whether we, we mash up different departments or not. Sure. So one week the Conservation Commission would be talking about what they do. Well, I, I haven't th that, um, really gone into um, the committees so much. Um, the boards, I think, being elected positions uh, are important. Um, and now there is one board that isn't elected, uh, but anyway, uh, that's why there's so many weeks, uh, and and even eight to ten would be combining some of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, and you know over the course of the year, um, 
Lisa and I would be working on putting together what the program looked like and and uh, you know similar presentation and getting binders for people who, with all sorts of information in them that they could then have as reference binders to uh, how things work. We've been we've been working on a guide to committees anyway. I think you've you've seen mm -hmm. a, a version of that and. Uh, our our goal is both to allow people to learn about town departments in general, and second, to try to see whether anybody might be interested in participating in one of the committees or boards, elected positions, um, and we would of course be pushing the volunteer uh, form as well if people wanted to to join any any committees. So it's it's a way to try to. Uh, deepen the bench of mm -hmm. possible players in uh, in the town. I'm thinking specifically of the Conservation Commission as one. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to to those, include that those one. Those that were and, low uh, on and it, the like, Board of Assessors, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. be, you know, being another one, a very important one. Uh, you know, all all people know is that they're the people to complain to. Sure. Uh, they don't yeah. really know how they do what they do and and why they do what they do. It's, you know, very technical work. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I just thought I would mention that partly to uh, introduce the the concept to our listening public, okay. and uh, to, partly to see whether or not you know people had responses for how it might work better. Or once a week is too ambitious. Nobody comes out for once a week for anything. Once a month is maybe. It sounds like more Conway, but uh, well, we can, my, we can my. play it by ear, see how it how it goes. Um, yeah, uh, talk about being a glutton for punishment. I wouldn't necessarily want it to go on for eight months or ten months or a year, mm -hmm. um, but it, that that would be an argument also for combining uh, some of the departments. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, the, both of these were were weekly. Um, weekly efforts, and they're both larger towns. So I have no idea how this would work. Mm -hmm. And you know, if, if we tried it out weekly and it, and it didn't work, we could try it every other week or something mm -hmm. like that. I wouldn't want to go monthly to stretch it out over a year. Um, but, uh, you know. These are also see. towns that have paid volunteer coordinators, and you have to be, I think, oh, Green, I think Greenfield has one, a part-time one. The, the, these were the uh, town administrators who, uh, who led the process? And mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think it's a good idea. And and there there are, these are just two examples. There are, there are a number of, of towns that have done this mm -hmm. as well. Again, well, most towns are larger than us, um, but it, it would certainly give people a you know an opportunity to hear about the um, the the duties, the job descriptions of the various positions, what people actually do. You know, mm -hmm. the, the budgets in their departments, um, uh, the staff, you know, get to meet people, talk with them, sure. uh, see how people work with each other. That, that's another thing. Is there's, there's a whole lot of teamwork that goes on. So having people hear that, where we have, um, especially around tax setting time, the, mm -hmm. uh, everybody's sure. talking with each other and everything has to mesh right for for things to work, and it's good for people to, to hear that, that, that we work as a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, the, the, the processes and the procedures behind what, you know, all the committees or boards or uh, councils do. And yeah, le learning and asking why things happen the way they happen is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, why, why is it that, 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 that this is this way, um, I think is a, it's a good opportunity. We'll see. You know, maybe people won't be interested. Maybe people will come for one or two and, and not the others. But I figure uh, if we fly it up the flagpole, we'll get some responses. And if your response is do it once a month, then uh, maybe that's that's what it can turn into. Mm -hmm. We could have we could have a, a whole calendar, kind of like calendar with different departments featured every month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I mean, this it's a creative wheel. To, to me, your target audience are the new, are the residents that have more recently moved into town and feel disconnected or haven't made the connection with the town yet, or even disgruntled older residents. Well, 
having the opportunity you know, yeah. to show up and ask you don't know, you don't always know what people know right you know the way it would take a lot of promotion you know, yeah to get the word out that this is happening something new yeah well I mean, you know a couple of mailings you want to reach the newbies work through this have the school send stuff out with mm -hmm. you know once or twice with yep, the yep. kids that's yeah that's where the new ones come from okay Good idea. Well, yeah, and I'm thinking of a townwide mailing too. So, yeah. you know, there would there would, and that would entail, you know, each mailing is $150 or something like that. So we're talking maybe for the binder materials and stuff like that, five six hundred bucks mm -hmm. that would be go into a line item for the Citizens Academy. Sure. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Any other uh, comments? And maybe on call that? it Residence Academy. We don't we don't ask about citizenship in the, as a member of. Uh, do we? Do you, have to be a, do you have to be a citizen? I, I um, hope not. Or can you just be a resident? I don't know whether we have to get that technically. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You could say town. Town Academy. Town Academy. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Tom, any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting? No. Uh, not that I know of. Good. You have an update for us? I do. It's an update. I even cover the uh, Citizens Academy in here, which uh, means that I put that item in before it went on the agenda. Okay. Um, departmental news, although tax bills went out late, for which we apologize, on Monday, October 22nd, we received Department of Revenue approval for the proposed tax rate of $18.65, up just 15 cents from last year, mm -hmm. due to new growth mainly. Uh, our maximum allowable levy is $5,075,000 with a FY19 levy of $4,916,000, leaving us with an excess levy capacity of $159,000. This That's is good. excellent news. Yes. That's good. Uh, and we should be sure to proceed moderately so as to maintain a healthy excess levy capacity. Um, in a couple of the preceding years, we, we really, and, and even in FY19, we, we were bumping up um, in our original budget, our conservative budget, uh, we were bumping up against the excess levy capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I was, I was concerned on town meeting floor when the, uh, the vote for, uh, for $10,000 was moved from free cash to raise and appropriate. Um, Obviously, we, we had more than enough for that, but um, we need, uh, in order to be able to do that sort of thing in the future, um, we do need to maintain a healthy excess levy capacity and not tax to the max, as they say. Now, next year, I expect will also be a good year. Uh, we're getting yes. uh, new growth from Comcast. There's some uh, accounts that we closed that will be uh, coming into free cash, so. Okay. What uh, new growth from Comcast? All, most of the uh, all wireless. The new cabling. Uh, all, all I, I mean, not wireless, but most something. of the new cabling will come onto the FY20 um, new people, growth. People get assessed more for their... Comcast would. No, Comcast. Comcast yeah, that was assessed. Personal personal Comcast. Property. Yes. It's personal property of the corporation, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So it's a personal property tax. That's the, virtually the only place we get new growth is from the, yeah, the, the hydro plant, <laughs> yeah. you know, and and uh, and Congress. Uh, the finance committee, oh, this is committee news, um, has approved two transfers of funds from the reserve fund: one for the town match for a FEMA grant to renew our hazard mitigation plan, and one to erase a deficit in the Mark Boyce Germain fund, which we've been using to assist in mowing the ceremonies. Uh, cemeteries. 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 <laughs> Uh, there's a, uh, yeah, I was, hmm, that's where the ceremonies happen. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, there will be a little bit more to clean up, uh, because the, the figure we used for that was not current by the time it was passed by the finance committee. Okay. Um, as you will recall, oh, that's the uh, Citizens Academy, don't have to say that one. Uh, I had a chance to test the water at the grammar school and found it odorless, though with a very slight taste different from bottled water. I've talked with Bob Lesko and we'd like to sit down with Mass Tank Inspection 
and express our concerns about the cost of the bottled water, our belief that their proprietary cleaner leached through the liner, and our consequent lack of faith that the liner has maintained its integrity. I actually spoke with Mass Tank late this afternoon after mm -hmm. I'd written this up and communicated this to them over the phone. Uh, we still need to write a letter. Uh, monthly tests are ongoing, and the school would like non-detectable toxin residue to assure parents of excellent water quality. Well, Regardless of whether results are zero before the end of the year, we're planning to request Mass Tank to reline it over the holiday break, as we have no confidence that the liner is intact if unevaporated cleaning solvents leached through it, which I believe is the most likely scenario. Okay. So well, we, have, we have safe water for now, correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, it's still bottled. Um, they're, they're still using bottled still water using until bottled. there's no, no detectable residue of the okay. solvents. So it is past, the water there is past potability tests. It is legal to use. It is legal to give to children. Um, and there is some difference of opinion amongst town members, uh, uh, people in the town, about um, uh, since it's now legal to drink, shouldn't they just drink it? Is one of the, you know, and that wells in general have a variability uh, as to taste and whatnot. Sure. Now, I, I went in there, I tasted it, I thought it tasted uh, like you're, you know, using metallic shavings as a mouthwash, um, where it, it doesn't taste, it doesn't taste right. It, it definitely tastes off. It has an off aftertaste to me from the tap. Um, the, the fellows that were there at basketball on Wednesday didn't seem to mind drinking from the water fountain and couldn't, couldn't taste it. But I, I, I did and a lot, it's, so, I mean, that's really the, the, th the question that they're at now, it's potable, but if you, if you just close your eyes or if you do a blind taste test, it's pretty obvious which one is... Um, I did a blind taste test. It wasn't obvious to me. Okay. It wasn't obvious to uh, Chief Wimet. Um And, of course, that was Wednesday. I don't know when you last tasted it. When uh, would the relining happen? Over the, the winter break. And there's enough time we wouldn't have to close the school? Yeah, yeah, there's enough time. Uh, we do want to make sure they're not rushed because... Presumably right. the reason right. we are having this problem is that they're being rushed. They were rushed. They felt rushed. Um, so, But I would caution use of language like toxic residue and toxins and whatnot because the water is lawfully potable right now. And what we're dealing with is a matter of taste and uh, right. not yeah. really a it, toxin it's, it's per been se. Tested, it's well, been tested by who? Uh, we have a water quality consultant who tests the water on a monthly basis who and they would that? like who was that Michael Blaine from water pro oh, okay and they say it's okay legally yes okay again the school would like non detectable non detectable residue to okay. assure parents of excellent water quality okay um, as long as there's detectable residue they don't want to tell the parents oh yeah there's residue but we're having your kids drink the water anyway there's um, detectable residue yes. in the water right now yes okay um, the off taste is what they're referring to so I mean no, they're referring to a chemical test okay that it has the effect of a taste there will be a point when it's not detectable by taste buds, unless you're a sommelier. Um, but there may still be... That was pronounced correct. There, bonus points. There may still be um, detectable residue in the water, and they don't want there to be detectable residue in the water when they <coughs> switch over to it. But if they do the test, do they still get caution. those volatile organics that they were getting before? That's the residue. And they still, yes. they still have them in the water. They're just at a low enough level that it's legal. Yes. And they want there to be no detectable residue before they <coughs> tell the parents that their kids are drinking the water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we, okay. could, we could turn on the water fountains but still have bottled water and people could choose? No. They would like there to be no detectable residue before we turn on the water fountains. 
the water fountains are, are on. on, they would rather not have the children drinking from that water supply until yeah. there's no detectable residue. I think okay. that covers all of the nuances. Okay, <laughs> I think we got it. No, I don't blame them, but okay. Yeah. Uh, I attended a meeting with FEMA to learn about the hazard mitigation plan uh, grant to renew our plan, which qualifies us for FEMA hazard mitigation funding. Uh, apparently, for uh, services for implementing the planning section must be procured under federal regulations, which differ from state, re state regulations. Uh, though we should be able to contract with the uh, FERCOG as planned. Okay. Um, we uh, are waiting for final confirmation from FEMA that the latest procurement regulation changes uh, are known to them so that we don't run into any problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have used other towns' documents freely for many years, and I'm glad I was able to share an excellent example from Conway. A number of towns are interested in repayment plans for employees who receive training but leave service early, and I sent out the agreement we came up with for our ambulance service EMT training to several towns, spreading the good name of Conway <laughs> throughout the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, MMA staff gave a short presentation on an FCA rulemaking, this was at that breakfast, regarding cable franchise fees and a possible substantial reduction in PEG access money. Uh, Bob Armstrong was also there, and we've gotten some preliminary information from MMA we'd like to bring to the next select board meeting. So we're preparing, uh, we're just talking about That doesn't sound good. Substantial okay. reduction in money? I don't like the word, I don't like the sound of that phrase. No. So the comment period ends December 14th. We, it might be that the select board would like to file a comment with FCC opposing those changes, but we have to look and see what they actually are and what it actually says and that sort of thing, so we know what to actually say. Mm -hmm. So I hope to have something for that, uh, something for you by uh, the next meeting on that. Okay. Good. Thank you, Tom. Um, Tom, in... I have something in here from the uh, Council on Aging for Signature. This that's is something we already you. voted on, that's right? That's just for you. No, it's just a grant acceptance thing. You're the con you're the authorized contract signatory. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, that shouldn't have been for the meeting. That's yeah. That's that's we get that every year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just accepting the grant money. All right, next item, uh, select board comments. No? Okay, good. I did get a, a phone call from a Pelham selectman and an email from him. Uh, they, want a, they want Conway to join them in opposing the expansion of the Chinese charter school, which seeks to, has an application pending to double its size and supply the C supplied information that there is three Conway kids there now. If they double it, it would be sick. We're, but we're the town pays nineteen and a half thousand for each kid that's in there now. And uh, last year, I think we signed a letter where we we have they tried it a couple years ago, and now they're back to try it again. And I think we did oppose it. I, I a think couple years I think ago. that's been being opposed by everybody down there. Uh, literally everybody. But last year, I thought they sent us a letter that they were looking for our signature, maybe or. Yeah, we, there was some recent action that happened. We can uh, look that up. Okay. Uh, do you have contact information you can get me from the... Yeah, I will. Thanks. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, okay. That certainly came up in the MMA meeting. A lot of discussion of charter schools. Yeah. All right, we got mail from uh, Eversource. Um, they're going to um, uh, stop their brush control program, but they still will be doing work on trees that threaten the safety and reliability of the system. So that's the, the gist of the letter. They so I'm sure everyone has seen all the trees that are down all over town. Uh, <laughs> There's no need for them to do any more for another. 20 years. <laughs> no, them stopping brush control, I mean, that's for traffic, that's the motor motoring safety of the public. That, 
that's the stuff that grows out where you can't see it or can't see around it when you're driving. That just I would have meant that. We, 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 do, we do that stuff. We do that. Do they mean the, the brush under the power lines? I, I yeah. believe that's, that's what they're referring yeah. to. Yeah. It's the power line maintenance. Yeah. Because they, they have a whole program. They always notify us when they're spraying herbicides, things like that. So I think that's what they're referring to. Right. Okay, no other announcements. Uh, our next regular meeting is uh, the 13th of November. Uh, that's a Tuesday here in the town office because Monday is the celebra is the Ooh. observance of Veterans Day. Okay, and we are going to reconvene at 7 p.m. at the town hall for the all committee meeting to hear the reports of town committees, commissions, boards, and councils. So the, the 13th is, the, is a Frontier Regional School Committee meeting at 7 o'clock? Um. Oh, well. I'll be here at 6. Okay. Well, uh, do we want to make that meeting a little earlier? Say 5.30? Um, we will be coming back from the MMA board meeting. Mm. Oh, right. We will be coming back from the MMA board meeting. Uh, da, 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 yeah. It'll be tough to get here by 5.30. That's right. We have the MMA board meeting. Okay. Well, I'll try to keep so, it. Yeah, keep it light for a, that. A light agenda. Light agenda. Um, what, what time is the school meeting? Seven o'clock. And actually, the thirteenth is the big one. That's the frontier. That's the unveiling. That's that's oh, when yeah. that's when the, the capital. Oh, the long the, fin, the FinCons are there. And yeah. The capital planning committee. And we all have to be there. Or one of us. Isn't that what? Um, well, we don't have to. Be there. Well, there was the. I, I'm sure there was the meeting. To, there was the meeting of the I'm select invited. boards that's there to appoint the representative to the contract. That's part of it. Really? Oh. Uh, oh, speaking of which, there. Oh, you're going to go over. Okay. Uh, speaking of which, there's also a, a piece of mail from uh, Frontier. Um, saying that they selected somebody for the, uh, not Frontier, uh, the uh, Franklin Regional uh, Vocational, uh, saying that they, right. they they selected somebody for that negotiating team. Right. But well, yeah. we tabled that last time. Yeah, we didn't send anybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, someone from Montague. Right. There was something in there about the select board to convene so that they can to appoint the rest of the ne the negotiating committee for the contract for the teachers contract. Yes, there was there is or was a meeting for Frontier. That's the 13th. To do that's on the 13th. Yes. That's a busy so day. That's, so that's the same meeting that you're talking about. Yes. It will happen at that meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's get over to the old committee meeting.